You're all actors here, so you know how crazy this life can be. It's so much fun, acting. It's the funnest job ever. But we all know there's also the rejection, the uncertainty. We work crazy long hours on set with an intensity that few jobs require. And then all of a sudden, there's nothing. And you are um, pulling a cash advance off of one credit card to pay off another. And we've all had the experience of celebrating at some swanky rap party, all glammed up, high heels, fancy duds, only to find ourselves at 2 a.m. on the sidewalk shivering, wondering whether we have enough money for cab fare. <laughs> As actors, our work is precarious. But we do what we do because we are students of human behavior. We are tellers of stories. We hone our empathic skills and revel in the exercise of imagining what it is like to be inside someone else's skin, in someone else's mind. We train, we study, we practice, and all we can ever safely expect is a chance to try again, if we can muster the strength and the courage. And we all have a plan B, because as good as we are as actors, our careers are so often at the whims of forces outside of our control. And for me, the outside force has been systemic racism and systemic sexism. Also, my height. <laughs> I'm very short. If I were four inches taller, I would have made a lot more money. But you know, I, you didn't drink milk when you was a little girl, and that's why you're so short. <laughs> Nothing I can do about my height. But racism, that's something I can take on. When I first started, exclusion and racism were overt, mostly benign, uninformed, practiced, but absolutely out in the open. How could I possibly expect to be considered for such a role? Asian women aren't ever heroes, right? Asian people don't act. Aren't you good at math? <laughs> I am good at math, but whatever. <laughs> it's an awfully dysphoric sensation to live in a place and yet to be invisible or misrepresented on our screens. If there are no reflections of anything close to your experience, are you even real? My response has been to lobby, to persuade, to educate, to find like-minded artists, and to build coalitions to create the conditions for culturally diverse, culturally diverse artists to mine the wealth of our untold stories, to find creative shelter, and to build shelter for others, and to somehow keep going. I've worked hard, yes. I've been lucky, yes. I think it's also been fairly helpful to have low expectations. High standards and low expectations. I think that's an immigrant thing. There have been so many lean years. Years when I tore through plan B, C, and D, and then I went to China. Along the way, I learned to measure my self-worth not by how many jobs I got, but how good a job I did, how good it felt to work, and how much of a difference I might have made for those other artists I'm working with. I've refused work that demeaned my race and gender. I refused work to, with, yeah. I 
I had help. I've got a great agent. Um, I refused work with, uh, well, assholes, because really, I mean, what's the point? <laughs> and I've taken so much work that I believed in, but didn't quite pay enough. So I never really strove for success, fame, because there's so many more things that are more important. Truth, family, self-respect, justice. And somehow, here I am. This is success, right here. I am deeply grateful to my dedicated, civic-minded colleagues here at ACTRA and every artist who has served or volunteered for our union. Your advocacy for our labor rights and safe working conditions and well-being has made our membership and our industry strong. ACTRA has had my back when I got bed bugs from a trailer, true story. Yeah. When I had issues on set, and especially when I was starting out, I learned the nuts and bolts of the business at ACTRA conferences. Thank you to everyone at ACTRA. Thank you, Heather, Fern, Tova, David and David, Wendy, Sue, Alistair, Karen, Carl. There are so many, too many to name. And thank you especially to ACTRA members before me, Rita Deverell, Brenda Camino, and the late Sandy Ross, who paved the way in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> Fiercely championing diversity, inclusion, and the creation of Canadian work that reflects the multicultural reality of our nation. I am so proud to accept this award in that spirit. This is a, a hugely life-affirming honor. Yeah, Kim's Convenience, time to talk about the Kim's Convenience. I'm waiting so long time for you to talk about the Kim's Convenience. Mrs. Kim is a very important person, you know. I'm sorry, she is in my head. I can't keep control of all the Kim's. Okay, Kim's Convenience. Thank you, Kim's Convenience. Thank you, Thunderbird, CBC, Yvonne, Ince, Sandra. Alex, all our producers, writers, and thanks especially to my Kim's family of actors. Paul, Andrew, Andrea. <laughs> I see you now, Paul. <laughs> Simu, Nicole, Amanda. You make work such a joy. Paul, your excellence, your passion, and your commitment lift all of us up every day. Thank you. But I really wish you'd stop jiggling your eyes, you know, when you jiggle your eyes. <laughs> when Paul's cracking up, he jiggles his eyes. Like, -ye -ye. <laughs> I'm so grateful that, we, that we're making a show together that is funny and important and groundbreaking and beloved. And oh, wait, can I, can I share a... a a message for you from a fan. I, I, I need to share this with you all. Hang on a second. Oh, shoot. I'm going to have to do it from this. <clears throat> oh, boy. Here we go. This is from Democratic Senator Maisie Hirono. Hi, Jean. I wanted you to know how much I love watching Kim's Convenience. I've been reduced to watching and re-watching reruns as I eagerly await the new season here in the U.S. These are not normal times here, so I wanted to thank you for bringing me joy to my life. Senator Hirono DM'd me the evening after the GOP Senate voted against witnesses at the presidential impeachment trial. So, yeah.
These are not normal times, so all the more reason to cherish precious moments like this. Thank you to all my warrior ally, allies, Michaela Washburn, Beverly App, Marion DeVries, partner in crime on so many theater projects, and Kishwar Iqbal, my agent and my best friend at the Gary Goddard Agency. Kishwar, where are you? 28 years. It's been 28 years, my friend. I love you so much. I love you so much. Thank you for trusting me to trust my gut, for setting such a high bar for hard work, persistence, and civic engagement. And Anand, buddy, you're doing good. I'm really proud of you. Thank you for accommodating my weird working hours. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. I like your new shoes. <laughs> my name is Jean Yoon. I am an Asian woman in my late 50s. I am short. And I have survived long enough to flourish. And if I can do it, so can you. Thank you so very much for this honor.